Okay, welcome back to part two of this scene. I'm uh, just adding some additional colors to this composition. I went through um, some blue tones as kind of a foundational uh, general color running through a lot of different things. Let's warm this scene up a little bit now. This is a uh, Peach Bellini Adirondack Lights. And uh, this will introduce um, various parts of the uh, scene to uh, the warm tones. Um, Speech Bellini is very light in value, um, but I was going to say if it was a little bit uh, more intense, uh, it's kind of an orangish um, hue, and uh, but a very light one, but if it was a little bit more intense, it would probably, where I overlap it against the blue, it would probably start looking more like green, um, which wouldn't be a bad thing, I'm just saying. Um, okay, that, we don't need too much of this now, I'm just, you know, trying to, I'm not trying to make a big statement with it, I'm just trying to introduce, you know, use it as a foundational color to introduce, you know, a little bit of a temperature change. This is um, sandal, a little bit less warm of a color, but still warm. It's a little bit more brown, I guess less uh, yellow than the peach blini. Okay, um, let's see, which way should we go? Should we go into the greens right now, or should we do the browns? Let's, let's, uh, let's move into the green tones this uh, grassy area. Okay, uh, pretty wet pad, uh, pretty intense of a color, so I'll need to be careful about not coloring <laughs> things that I don't want to color with it, because it's a fairly bold statement. It's, it's this color right, you know, right here. Okay. Starting to define things a little bit more. Okay, that was a yellow green, number 52. This is, I think this is the jungle green, yeah, jungle green. Let's go for those shadows again. Anchor the trees down a little bit more. grassy area on the other side of this uh, little dirt road. Kind of a nice spring day. Um, let's see, I didn't pull one of my darker greens, so why don't we just use the green from a pen? Start off in your darker areas to begin with. It's pretty intense green, um, which I like, but I don't like it as an end result. I want it a little bit more kind of a mellower green, so we'll go over that with some brown or something like that. Okay, let's see here. Let's move into some brown tones now. I've switched, uh, there's a little bit of a uh, purple thing, you know, stain on that, but it's not on the pad, it's dry. Uh, this was the green side. Okay, this is a pale orange. Quite often the color that I use as a base color. 
color for my brown tones and I guess I am using it in the grassy area and let's put some of that onto the covered bridge okay maybe a little bit more along the uh, the vertical um, plane quite a bit. I lean on this color quite a bit for uh, um, different usages and landscape stamping. Um, a lot of it is uh, used for something other than brown objects. I use it in my green grasses a lot. Like I was saying. Let's take some of that off. I want to go for a much lighter application of it, so I'm using a drier application of it. Uh, okay, let's use some on the side of this, on the vertical areas of the uh, covered bridge. Get in there. Okay, have up some back in the trees. And, I don't know, let me, let me go ahead and use a little bit of this on this mountain in the background. I don't want to use too much. Okay. Um, hmm. Dark brown. It's pretty dark, so... I'm be really careful in here. Let's start on the vertical side of this. Okay. Maybe introduce a little bit of it onto the rooftop. Just so it's not you know, so stark in uh, contrast, maybe some shadows of some of the trees are hitting it uh, on a half of it or something. Uh, shadows in the trees. Using this applicator on its edge like that so I don't get a full oval shape application of it across there. Okay. And this scene in here, at this point in time, it's starting to get a touch on the muddy side in terms of uh, the colors used throughout there. Um, I'm not worried about that, cause, uh, but I do could start considering it at this point in time. Um, and that's where the use of like the white gel pen and uh, the color box pigment inks come into play. Um, I'm going into my sky because the sky I need to balance the scene off a little bit because the bottom portion was getting really intense with the uh, the value and uh, the relative brightness of the uh, colors down there. So it was looking a little bit unbalanced, you know, it was so bottom heavy. So I'm going to bring some of that weight, visual weight, into the sky, you know, in the form of um, darker tones. In this case, my sky was uh, blue tones, so I'm bringing uh, darker and brighter blues up there as well. a little bit more continuity between uh, the top and the bottom of the card. Or a little bit more balance, too, I guess you can say. And why not bring a little bit of this blue down into that green area? So there's a little bit more continuity between the two regions. It doesn't look as though it's blue down here, but just by having that common color up there, um, it works to kind of unify things a little bit more. Okay. Uh, kind of put 
putting some over that mountain too. I thought the mountain was standing out a little bit too much, you know. I want it to recede a little bit too. So why don't we bring some of that blue in there. And it's very faint blue because you know, this, at this point, this, this sponge tip is, is getting really dry. Okay, now in all the scenes that I do, I, I'm usually doing uh, whatever color I stamp my darkest objects in, black. I'll finish that color off on the edges. Okay, I, just want, I don't want a black sky, I just want a kind of a darker sky using that same um, value. And this is also framing uh, the scene off. And containing it. It's kind of like one of those things you're kind of making, like I said in past videos, it's a world into itself. It's almost like, you know, when you look at a card and it's kind of done in this format, it, I picture it as like a, it's like you're looking through, a, you know, one of these little, these little Easter eggs where you kind of peer through a little hole and there's a, like an entire little world in there, you know, a little scene. A little bit more balanced now. It's starting to, I don't know, uh, I think the scene's starting to really take shape now. So that's one of those things too, you know, it's a good lesson um, in terms of uh, scene building. Um, many times um, in my scenes uh, as I'm putting them together, you know, and I'm going through the first few colors, it at some point in time, with all the colors that I use and whatnot, it, it, a lot of times the scene, I mean, midway, it just, something, it just doesn't look right, you know, and, you know, if you keep kind of working with it and continuing the, uh, the process, um, it all starts to take shape after a while. I'm putting some little shadows underneath my trees using that black ink, but it's, again, it's a very light shade of black, see it's kind of like a gray. And let's anchor these objects down a little bit more. Here I'm putting some down into that underneath the uh, covered bridge. I'm putting some on, you know, into some of this rock right here, but maybe not over the entire portion of it. Let's go with a little bit more of a intense black there on the edge. A darker version of it. And what I did right here is I came and I outlined the top of it and darkened in the back of it and it makes that rock kind of pop out a little bit more. Okay, it's coming along. Um, let's see now. Um, trying to figure out what other colors I'm going to do. Okay, maybe I'll, that's, that's where I'll take it to at this point in time. Okay. Now, you're all familiar with uh, markers and different types of markers. These ones just came across my desk recently. It's ultra soft brush tip markers, and these ones are look by Marvi Uchida. Uh, and I've used them a little bit, but not too much. Um, I'm going to go through and add in some little... These are alcohol... Did I happen to mention these are alcohol-based? But uh, the alcohol-based pens, you know, won't smear. They shouldn't smear um, your colors that you've laid down using the dye-based inks because they're, you know, it's a completely different binder. So you, can, you can, should be able to apply these very freely and not worry about, you know, smearing and whatnot. And I'm kind of taking this in a, you know, very...
slow approach. I'm starting with, you know, really dull colors at first, very light ones. And I'm approaching 15 minutes on here. I'm going to have to finish this one off in a yet another segment.